Hey guys, welcome to another tutorial. We're going to go a bit retro this time. We're going to do some halftone effects. So we're going to recreate one of the examples from the uh, earlier videos. So we're going to recreate the smiling girl and the halftone version of that. So um, before we recreate this, um, I'm going to walk you through the overall flow of the finished composition because I think that will help you to understand what we're doing here. As you may have noticed, uh, I'm doing this in Fusion, the standalone version. Uh, you can do this in uh, DaVinci Resolve as well, but what I've noticed uh, is that the performance is not quite on par with Fusion standalone, at least on my system it isn't. So especially when I work with particle type effects, and this effect depends on that, it really bogs down my system and it becomes a bit slow. And especially when you do a tutorial, it's not great. So therefore, I'm doing it in Fusion, but you definitely can do it in uh, DaVinci Resolve as well. So having said that, let's have a look at what we're doing here. So um, on the left hand side, you see the original image and here we see our um, halftone version of it. And I can show a later merge as well, where I apply a bit of a, tex a texture and I displace it as well. But let's focus right now on just the plain halftone stuff. So what you can see here is that the brighter the pixel is, the smaller the associated dot is. So, sorry, the brighter the input pixel is, the smaller the dot is. So that is a key to uh, recreate this halftone type effect. Once you've created this, it's really easy to change some key parameters like the background color over here or the foreground color, or you can even use the original image colors as well, like so. Now you can straight away notice that the palette is somewhat restricted, right? There's not a lot of differentiation here. That is because I'm actually using another custom tool here where I reduce the number of colors in the image. So if I quickly display it here, you can see it. You can easily change that, right? We can up it to say 100 and if we then See, you see more of a difference in the colors here. And if you zoom out, it is more, more lifelike, if you will. But it may not be the effect you're after, right? So as you can see, a lot of possibilities here. Uh, you can easily change the pixel size as well, or you can change the pixel type. Let's quickly do that, actually. So um, let's change it to a type of dash, right? By just changing the mask on the background node, you can really easily, and let's quickly show that here, you can easily change the overall look of the image. Really, really cool stuff. So um, let's walk through the flow. So we start with the input image, which I'll display here. We'll slow it down a bit. That's needed in our case because otherwise it was a bit fast moving and it was a bit short. Then we reduce the colors. We adjust some of the brightness and contrast. And then very importantly, we feed it into a P image emitter. So that's part of the overall particle system. That is basically using the input values, the pixels, to create a matrix of particles using the input color, right? So we can see that here. Now, um, what you will directly notice is that, again, what I was showing earlier on, and actually let's change it back to the dot. It's a bit easier to see. Um, as I said, the brighter the pixel, the smaller the overall particle and that is done by the p custom tool and we'll go into that later on then we render it out and then we feed it into a merge 3d where i combine it with a camera so if we go into the perspective view right you see the camera here it's not absolutely necessary you can make it into a 2d particle system as well but it will give you a lot more flexibility then i basically render it out Right, and uh, we add a background in and add some texture and displace some of the texture and then basically you're done. Uh, I'll get into the bottom part a bit later on, but the basic point is that we need to ensure that the texture behind it 
will move with the camera, otherwise it will look odd. Okay, now let's get into recreating this composition. Right? So I'm in a blank composition apart from two elements. That, that's the original video, which I've already trimmed down, and our paper texture. So let's get started. So first of all, we'll add a time speed node to slow this thing down. Right? Let's set it to sort of 20% of the speed. And uh, then, as said, we will do our custom tool to reduce the colors. So it is going to be very simple. I'll use the number input here to drive the, um, the formula. So let's for now put in value four, a value four, and let's go in it, into the channels tab and type in an expression floor, open brackets, and then we're going to say C1, that's the channel information, right? So if you're in the red expression, it refers to the red channel. When you're in the green expression, it refers to the green channel and so forth. So it makes copy and pasting uh, a lot easier. So it's C1 <coughs> times N1, our parameter, divided by N1. And that's all there is to it. That will actually reduce the number of colors, or at least will affect the number of colors. So let's copy it over in here and in here, and then we, we can show the result. There we go. Easy as that. Right? And then you can easily change this, and you can see that it directly affects the number of colors. So if we set it to 100, then it looks almost like the original. But let's for now set it back to four. Next one up, a brightness contrast node, fairly standard fare, but for now let's leave it, right? We will use this node later on to tweak our uh, image. And then very importantly, we're going to add the image it, uh, emitter and the particle renderer. So immediately, well, let's show the first frame, otherwise it takes a bit too long. And let's zoom in, right? We see our particle grid. Now, uh, the first thing I want to do is really reduce the density here. We don't need that many particles. So let's set it to 0 0.2 here and, sorry, 0 0.2 here. The next thing we want to change is really to say, okay, I want to create particles every frame and the length for each particle, the, the life, the length of life, lifespan as such, uh, should be one because it's creating particles every frame anyways. Now, before we go into the P custom, we need to do one more thing. So let's go into the style tab and change the style to bitmap. Right. Here's where we'll create our little particle. So let's create a little background here and let's set the image size to something like 50 by 50. Right. Very small square and then add a little ellipse to it. So then you get something like this. Now, the one thing we do want to do is change the uh, background color to white. Okay, we get this. That will serve our purposes for now. And let's feed it into the image emitter. And if we then show this, of course, we have our pixel here. One thing I need to do here is to change the transparency to transparency to quick sort. Okay, so of course, right now the pixels are way, or the particles are way too large, but we're going to fix that in the P custom. So let's add the P custom. And like so. So we're going to use the numbers in here and feed a bunch of expressions in the particle tab. Before we do that, I'd like to set it up a bit differently to make it all a bit more user friendly. So let's right click the P custom name here and do edit controls. So let's then select the first one number in one and let's rename that to size. That will determine the size of the particles. That needs to remain on the numbers tab and let's specify a valid value of or a range from one to 10, and maybe a center of five. Screw control, control is good, so let's keep that. That's the one there, that's done. Next one up, that will be our checkbox. Number in two, there we go. And let's call that uh, use original colors. So again, when people check that, we want to use the original image colors. So let's do numbers here and let's 
change this into a checkbox control and that's all there is to it. There we go. So then we need to have uh, RGB channels, number three for R, four for G, etc. So let's do that. Uh, edit controls, uh, let's select the number in three. Uh, let's call that one particle color. So the first one will be the first in the group that will give the name to the group, or yeah, the name to the group. And let's set that to numbers again. And let's set this to color control. Then we want it to be a new group. So this is okay. And the ID is red. That's the very first channel. So let's do okay. Good, that's there. Next one up and we're nearly there. And this will be the number in four. And that again needs to be on the numbers tab. Color control. And then not the new group, we want to assign it to the same group, 102. And that will be the green channel. Done. And the last one. And that will be number in five on the numbers tab. Oops, color control, same group, and blue. I'm not bothering about the alpha, I'm just inheriting the alpha of the image. Okay, so that's it. So let's do a quick test. If I set a color, say red, does that work? Yeah, well, that's completely red. Let's do, um, yeah, that works. Just a few things to see that everything is properly linked. Yeah, that all works great. Uh, of course, nothing is changing to the image yet because we haven't uh, created the expressions yet in the particle tab. So let's do that quickly now. Let's go to the size one first. So the brighter the uh, pixel, the larger the size needs to be. So what we can do is something like open brackets, three minus open brackets, three plus, sorry, R plus G plus B, close brackets, close brackets. All right, um, so we've got three as a base size then minus the combined values of the uh, three channels. So the higher the brightness, the smaller the pixel will be, but this will be way too large, as you can see when I zoom out. So first of all, we still need to multiply it by our particle, by our N1 times N1. Now N1 currently is set to zero, I believe. Let's check that, yeah, to zero. So let's select something like two. Right, so way, way, way too large. So let's fix that, very simple. We just put some brackets around it and do divided by 1000. And there we go. We've got much more reasonable sizes. Right, so now when you change it here, goes smaller, goes bigger, really, really handy. And again, it takes the brightness into account. The brighter, the pixel, the smaller the size. All right, that's looking good. So the next one we need to work on is really the color. So in case of the channels, right, what we need to take into account is when people use the checkbox, the tick box, then they want to use the colors over here. Otherwise they want to use the selected color. So let's do that. If and that's the checkbox is N2, if that holds true, so that you could say equals one, or you can just leave it out. If N2, that means the same thing, then use the original color of the image, that's R. If it's false, then use the number input, that's for the red channel, N3. And then we can copy it over to the green channel. And of course, we need to then change the R to a G, N3 to N4. And lastly, to the blue one, change this to, oops, blue and N5. Okay, so let's test this. So let's pick a color, let's do red. Bang, there you go, that works. Original colors, works. We're done here. Okay, so that's really, really cool stuff and will make life a lot easier. All right, let's add a Merge 3D and let's pipe a camera in there, like so. Display the Merge 3D. Of course, we've got now the viewpoint of the camera, so and it's right on top of the image, so you can't quite see it. So we can just change the perspective for now. 
right? As you can see, we would need to pull it out a bit. Let's switch back to camera. And uh, maybe a bit easier if we change it from over here. So change the offset here, change it to something like, uh, I think around 1.7 or something, I don't know. Uh, we can't quite see enough here. Something like this, oh, stop. Um, let's add a renderer in. Set a renderer to OpenGL and show that in here. So here you can see it a bit more easily. We don't actually, we've got a bit of a spare space there. So let's zoom out a bit more, or in rather, until we've got it exactly like so. Then, bang, we're done there. Um, I do in the meantime want to change the, uh, the color a bit and don't use the original color. Let's do something like this. And now the size, it's all a bit too big. Let's pop a background behind it so that we can see what we're doing, right? So let's add a background like so. Uh, pipe is in here, right? And then show it, oops. And uh, then the background color, let's make that, that nice orange or amber you saw earlier on. There we go. Okay, now we can see what we're doing. So I don't think the pixel size is quite big enough, so we can increase that a tiny bit. Now there are multiple ways of doing that, but for now let's focus on this one first. Increase the size somewhat, as you can see here. Um, still not very happy with it. I think in the brightness contrast, we may need to up the contrast a bit. Yeah, it's looking a bit better. Maybe the brightness a tiny bit more or less. Yeah, maybe something like this. Right? But as you can see, there's an awful lot you can tweak. So now we're nearly there, really. So um, as I said before, we've got the texture as well. Now I'll show you the wrong way and the right way. Well, there's no real wrong way, but let's see what happens if we just add another merge here. And uh, then apply the texture to it and show it. Of course, now the merge, the texture is right on top of it, but uh, we can do it the other way around, right? Control T to swap foreground and background. Of course, nothing really uh, works then. So we need to change the apply mode and let's set it to multiply. And here we can see our texture coming through. Maybe it's a bit clearer if we set the background to white, right? Like so. Now, um, that works great if you have a camera that doesn't move. But what happens if you start moving the camera? Let's quickly do that. Let's uh, go in two seconds and let's set a keyframe here. And let's go back then to frame zero and then zoom in as we saw in the original example. All right, let's zoom in to something like this. What you then get when you play it, it zooms out and I don't know if it's really visible over YouTube, but you can see the background, the texture is static. So it doesn't really seem like the pixels are really part of the background. It, it's just really a background that's there somewhere in the back. Uh, not great. So what we need to do instead is the following, right? Let's display this here for now. Uh, we are going to create a separate uh, branch here here and uh, we're going to basically associate this camera with the background as well. So let's quickly show that. So let's create another Merge 3D. Um, I can't pipe the paper texture into this directly. However, I can add an image plane, pipe it in there and the image plane in there. So what we get then is an image plane with the texture on top of it, right? And all I need to do then is pipe the same camera into it, right? And then add a renderer again. And what you get then, and I'll set the renderer to OpenGL. If we play this, you see the texture is moving out as well. That is great because now we can just add it in here. And now it all works because we see both the image and the background are moving at the same pace so that it seems like the pixels are stuck to the background. All right, so that looks pretty great. 
Now, uh, then you can do things like displace, right, to integrate it a bit more even. Uh, so maybe it's uh, clearer here. So let's pop the displace in here, right, display it, and then use the same renderer to displace the image. And you can see what's happening. The pixels are being displaced by the texture so that it looks a bit more that are affected by it. Right? It's on some images it may, uh, may work better than on others, but you just need to experiment. And that's really all there is to it. So now we've got our finished product. And again, you can so easily change an awful lot. Right? So, okay, I don't like the red. Let's change that into a blue. Right? Takes a bit, but then there it is. And you can change the pixel size, or maybe still want to change the background color. I want to change the contrast a bit, it all will work. Or, as said, you know, I want to actually work with my original colors, but it's maybe there are too many original colors, so let's go to the custom tool. Let's decrease this to two. Right? And this is already a very nice cartoony type look. So, uh, yeah, that's all there is to it, really. Then you, all you need to do is basically save it out and you're done. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. And if you've got any questions or comments, uh, please leave them below the video. And in the meantime, take care, guys. Have a great day. Bye-bye.